we go with the Polyman Podcast. In three, two, one. Talk about torturous beats, and uh, this has been a lifetime uh, of just curling up in the fetal position in the corner of some uh, outpost uh, on the strip in Reno. Uh, my life has been just a running nightmare when it comes to this sort of stuff. Uh, welcome to our podcast, the Polyman Palmacell, Jeff DeForest. We have a technical crew here uh, of uh, immense expertise, including our good friend and big boxing fan, Juice. Yes. And one Mike Luby Lubitz, who is on virtually every podcast in America today, except for maybe <laughs> Stu Gotts. But, uh, Polly Man, how are you? I, I know Good we're going to get into this thing uh, in, in just a few minutes here with uh, your friend Ross Gallo, who uh, was at the pinnacle. I mean, this was a guy that, uh, you know, was one of those Ryan Leaf type of stories. You're, you're the number two overall pick. You're sitting there on the threshold and the precipice of greatness. And the next thing you know, where everything is torn apart, falls apart. And uh, it's a wild story we'll elaborate on. But, uh, I, I don't know if uh, that was as tough a beat, uh, and, and maybe you can assess this, because uh, I do have a picture of your favorite racehorse, Argentine Tango, up here to set the <laughs> set the pace on the show. And, and that was hideous, a steward's disqualification that had no justification whatsoever. It was more heinous than the play in the game between the Rams and the New Orleans Saints, and no apologies were forthcoming. It was just a piece of ugliness. You had several dimes. <laughs> To consider, yeah. Uh, yeah, going up in smoke there was Cheech and Chong time. This was something with Ross, if the people don't know, of course. Uh, this is Ross and Randy Gallo and young Randy, the famous Gallo brothers from down here, some of the greatest handicappers you can find. I would say Ross is about the best long shot handicap I've ever seen in my life and one of the top tournament players on earth. And, they, uh, and this is the 20th year of the NHC NTRA championships. And... Uh, they qualified again. I don't know how many times they've qualified over the years, but a bunch. And uh, they made a huge run. We'll let Ross tell the story, but they made a, a huge, huge run and moved it to second place. And then on the final day with a race or two left, they actually took the lead, with ten, a $10.20 lead based on a $2 win, $2 place mythical bet. And the first prize was a hefty one, $800,000 to the winner. And uh, they just got done in at the last uh, last possible moment in a so crazy. three horse photo and an inquiry and everything. It's, uh, it's it's you're about to make a life changing score. Yes. And and and, and this happened. I was going to compare uh, this beat though in terms of uh, tough to take uh, to the Mexican caddy from Matt Kuchar yes, yes. In, in a golf tournament because uh, I mean uh, the, the guy was supposed to get like one hundred thirty thousand. Kuchar stiffs him with five. Right, and and, and the caddy in. In fairness, Tim said he didn't expect to get what the tour uh, regular ten percent a common got, payout you know, for caddies. He, he didn't he'd expect that, but he felt he he'd be treated a little fairly. And then Kuchar's agent tried to give him fifteen, and he said, "Thank you, but no thank you. Take a hike, you know." And, uh, Don't you have to throw that money back in the guy's face? Yeah, yeah which he did. Basically. Yes, uh, yeah. he essentially said, and uh, he could be seen later on uh, while he was caddying for other people at the uh, Club de Mexico or wherever it was right. that this tournament take pl took place—a Fugazi tournament, if there ever was one. <laughs> one point three to the PGA Pro gives the guy five thousand wow. dollars, and uh, it is Pepe Mendez or whatever his name was, what was uh, seen uh, shouting various things that involved uh, references. To your madre. <laughs> and and he, he was holding up pictures of El Chapo saying, uh, don't worry, we can still get you, Coocher. Uh, it's going to be hard to root for Matt Coocher uh, after root, something can like never, that. Uh, can never root Stiff for him job. again. And uh, Coocher was going to say, this was my lucky caddy. This was my lucky caddy. He did everything, substitute caddy. He did everything I asked him. And give him five, make a, what, $1.26 million or something? Uh, five dimes, yeah. Wow. We have a story like that working here with a tennis player, uh, Osaka. Yes. Naomi Ozaka, who was working with a coach at a local park here uh, in uh, Pompano Beach, Florida. And I used to see this girl out there, and I was thinking, man, who the hell is that? Because uh, she was clearly uh, better than most of the people that you right. see. And there are many sensational uh, young people out there hitting a the ball uh, and, and having private coaching. And, and this poor schlep of a coach from the Bahamas who, uh, you know, is just a bust out. He's out there uh, later on, midnight, you'll see him still raking the clay, trying to make a living. And, and he's working with this girl for two years under the premise that uh, she will pay him uh, then uh, wh whatever he has coming uh, for all of this uh, extra work that he did, she will pay him uh, once she makes it big. So she hits a tournament, Indian Wells, wins $1.2 million. Then uh, she's gone on to win two back-to-back -back Grand Slams. Still nothing coming from her to the city of Pompano wow. Beach and this poor slob who was training her uh, up to this uh, great effort. And then 
in typical fashion, she just fired her coach who, who uh, wow. helped her win back-to-back Grand Slams. Uh, it, it's ugly when you don't get the reward. No, no, that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's for sure, for sure, for sure. With the racing game, you know, many times with champion jockeys, the guy will put in, the agent will put in all the early, early uh, going-ons, right, and go through the learning system yes. and the and uh, starting to make it, and then all of a sudden they'll get a call like, uh, well, it's time to come up here. I'm your new agent. I could get you with this guy, with this guy, with this guy. And many of the jocks are young, you know, uh, young guys that don't know about loyalty, don't know about anything yet. Wow, sounds great to me. I got a chance to to be with. Uh, and so uh, loyalty is a big, big, uh, a big thing for sure. It happened uh, with a mutual friend of ours. Uh, I, I don't know how well you knew this guy, but I knew him from the radio business, a guy named Steve Paris, who had Ramon Dominguez at Call to Racecourse. And then uh, he took him up to uh, Laurel, I believe. He yeah. started making it on that circuit. Next thing you know, he's in New York, and he's got uh, Mr. Hotshot uh, as his agent, and uh, Paris is back down here trying to pedal some bug boy to, uh, you know, some bust-out trainer there on the backstretch. It's so funny. I was the last one they spoke to. They were all packed up, loaded, and still a little, uh, you know, a little tentative. And I came out of the call to kitchen, just coincidentally, say, let me ask your opinion. We were going, they were still a little scared to go. They were going to write, I think, first call for Frank Pissarro. Remember, who used to win a million yes. claiming races. He had there. the hot chili peppers he was putting right. on the yeah, balls right. of the horses. Exactly. It was absolutely a phenomenal technique. Exactly. You, you could have Todd Pletcher, <laughs> Baffert with these monsters. You run a little cayenne across the uh, testicles of a racehorse. Whoosh, right to the wire, my friend. And I told him, look, the turnpike's right there. You know, by call, there was a turnpike's right there. Get on the road and go and... Uh, and boy, Ramin, Ramin, Ramon Dominguez, who then career was cut short due to some serious injuries, you know, vaulted to the leading ride, was breaking records yearly. Hall of Fame uh, career that he had after he dumped my boy uh, Steve, who was, yes. uh, you know, uh, flipping burgers down in uh, <laughs> Wheeling, West Virginia, <laughs> hoping to catch on with somebody at Mountaineer. Uh, all right, uh, give us the details on his story. We're going to be joined here by uh, Ross Gallo who was uh, one of a triumvirate of uh, just, I mean, they were like marauding pirates, uh, just cutting their way through the NHC, which is the equivalent to, in horse racing of the World Series of Poker. Uh, uh, right. What happened? In fact, let, let's bring Ross on yes. and, and let him tell the story. Uh, Ross, how are you, my friend? Congratulations on your Patriots. Yeah, thanks. It's been an exciting few weeks. So um, it's uh, it's great to be on with you guys. It's like deja vu. I feel like I've been here before. Yeah. I know the uh, last time... Uh, it's been uh, we were all together up in Dover Downs many years ago. That's like uh, 15, 16 years ago when you came up with that uh, with that great idea. But uh, we filled in uh, earlier. We fi- we filled in the audience what the situation was and and the tough beat. But you could tell us the you know just give us the whole uh, rundown. What a wild charge you guys made, and then what a what a tough tough beat. Well, uh, I don't know if your audience is uh, familiar with the NHC, but it's been around since the turn of the millennium. started around 2000. This was actually the 20th one this year. And uh, when it began, it was 200 entries. Uh, first prize was $100,000. This year they had 670 entries, over 500 players, because you can qualify twice now. And... Um, We've been, uh, my brother and my nephew and I have been qualifying since the beginning. My brother was an original very first year. I, I, this was my 14th time qualifying out of 20 years. <laughs> I think my brother and my nephew qualified at least six or seven times each. So um, it's it's great to be there because it's the only tournament we play. We have to qualify to get there. And um, every other one we have, you can you can enter uh, with prize, you know, with an entry fee. But the thing is, we've never really, never really raised a gallop. The best I finished in all that time is 17th. It's very difficult to put it all together that weekend, and uh, we didn't start off too good in the in the three day format that they have now. It used to be two. Uh, the first day, I had uh, exactly zero dollars, tied for last. My brother, my nephew, had uh, something in the 50s, and I think the leader had 190 dollars. So that's not a too too good of a spot to be in after day one. And it's based on, as we said, $2 win, $2 place, mythical. Yeah, hypothetical. Uh, you play tracks all across the country. Um, we're out in Vegas. Uh, that's another uh, part of the allure of going. It's not only do you get to play in the tournament, but an all-expense paid trip out there. They, they pay your, your flight and the four nights of room. Um, 
And um, curiously, though, I, I think if you remember back, Paul, the, the year that I actually had, I, I, I cashed a little money. I, I think I had the second highest score. It was a similar situation. You and I spoke after the first day, and I.